get ready to close this festival, we wanted to take time to remember the life of Margaret Longhill, founder of this festival and friend to us all. We gather to give thanks for her life. She came to this earth in Louisville, Kentucky on October 16, 1921. And she departed us on March 1st in Dunellen, Florida. She walked with us here for 96 years. It is in her memory that we join together and for her life that we are grateful. Today, in this place that she loved, at this festival that came of her passion, and through this music and its artists that she treasured, we remember her, we honor her, and we promise to carry on the good work she began in us, in music, and in the love that she taught us. We'll begin today with one of her very favorite hymns, led by Art Brummer. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, I know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, oh Lord, what would I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know He'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, I know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, oh Lord, what can I do? The angels beckon me from heaven. Saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise rip back from heaven's shore. And I can't be at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what would I do? The angels beckon me. Connors, we know her as Nikki. <laughs> My soul is a hawk. I am the return from the place the Indians call land where the wind is born. Into the quiet and lonely spaces of the upper skies soar I, the beauty of Florida. As thermal air currents send their song through my wing feathers, and I float in ever-widening circles, yellow eyes piercing in rapture, the blues and golds, the orange and faint pinks of sunset, and I see in the far, far distance my haven, the majestic old dead tree on whose limbs I find my soul is a hawk. Margaret's beloved niece, Julie Longhill, one of 22, will read a poem that she wrote for Margaret 
that has been especially meaningful to us all. My aunt had a huge heart and an artist's soul, and she nurtured that in me and a lot of other people. And this is a poem I wrote after a visit to her place. <clears throat> My aunt's place. My gypsy soul loves to find itself at a pink house on the Rainbow River in a little town called Zen Ellen, where the live oaks create a canopy and curved branches touch the ground. Sunlight streams through the Spanish moss and my soul feels enchanted. I stare at these magnificent ancient trees, their curves, their strength. The negative space they create is an artist's dream. I love walking down these streets. The ground is flat, and so are the houses. Very welcoming and warm, like the weather here. Life is easy with flip-flops and bicycles natural springs, and aquatic birds. The sunlight is different, more ethereal somehow. Everything has a shimmer. Bird songs are even clearer. The pace is slow like the egret stalking. If you move too fast, people here may not be able to see you. <laughs> The Rainbow River ribbons around the town. The clear blue water is reflected in the people's eyes. My soul finds healing here, where family ties are strengthened and gypsy souls are loved. The breeze coming off the rainbow welcomes one and all. Thank you. Margaret's beloved John Sims and Florida friends. Well, I thought, uh, you know, the motto of the Will McLean and Margaret's motto was saving Florida through music. I thought, what better way than to do an original song about Florida? So.
work by Will McLean, and I believe her wings are on the thermal currents creating songs with the wind through wings. There's really no place to begin or end, for Margaret is eternal. She's in my earliest memories. Margaret and my mother met in the convent way back. John says, I don't like to put dates on things anymore. It makes me realize my age. Their bond was unbreakable. I'm not going to point to specific memories, but I will say that love and encouragement was paramount. It was always there, palpable, and looking back, I can honestly say Margaret was instrumental in shaping my life. For Margaret was a shapeshifter. She was blessed with a smile that warmed eyes, that looked deep arms and hands that made hypnotic motions, and a heart that she could and would give you a piece of. There was no way to resist. I've heard a lot of people say, can't say no to Margaret. <laughs> John continues, she was always engaged with the youth, working her shape-shifting abilities and casting her encouraging spells. Like water to plants, she made it rain, wanting and expecting them to be and do better. Margaret was wisdom. Her love for nature, the arts, and humanity were pools to bathe in. Life, as they say, is a struggle, and it is. However, Margaret somehow lived on in the sunnier side most always. As a side note, now she was always giving us directions on how to get to that sunny side, but as a side note, her directions to a specific place were terrible. <laughs> She would give you directions to where to meet and not even be close. John would say, Margaret, you failed to tell me about that very important turn I had to make. And she would return with a little giggle and say, well, you should have known what I meant. <laughs> Margaret's love for her family was unwavering. I so enjoyed all the times being, with, being a fly on the wall with them. For they too have the same wonderful qualities as her. They are uplifting, smart, and compassionate people, and I'm blessed to know them. If one wants to see Margaret's legacy, you don't have to go far. This weekend is the annual Will McLean Music Festival. For those who don't know, and if you don't know, you're probably in the wrong place. Will was a Florida singer-songwriter whose work centered on Florida, its history, its people, and its environment. Margaret knew him for many years and shared his passion. And when he passed away, she took up the mantle and created this festival. The people she has touched in positive and encouraging ways is uncountable. To use her name in a past tense goes against every fiber of my being. So I, with a smile, refuse. I will continue to let her shape me, willing and thankful always taking direction toward that place in the sun, even if there's a wrong turn or two. 
Margaret makes you truly believe you're special because you are. And I am one of the best and one of the blessed to have had her in my life. My soul is a hawk. The words of John Sims. Some facts. Margaret was the firstborn daughter of John and Angela Longhill, the oldest of seven children. And from the beginning, she began blazing her own trails. She graduated from Catholic High School at the top of her class and won her school's oratorical contest in her senior year. She already had that commanding presence we are all so familiar with, and yet she heard another call. And shortly after graduation, she left home to become a Sister of Mercy at the novitiate in Dubuque, Iowa. She took the name Sister Mary Amara as a nun. During her tenure as a nun, she taught various grade levels at St. Bernard Academy in Nashville and the Immaculate Conception Academy in Memphis, and no surprise to any of us, she was the head of the drama department. <laughs> Directing Broadway shows like My Fair Lady and Brigadoon, and many more. In the early 70s, Margaret fell in love with Florida after she came here to teach at several public colleges in three different campuses of the Central Florida Community College. She also taught at the Senior Institute for the Elder Hostel Groups, including teaching them the love of the rivers by taking them kayaking. <laughs> so before long, a neighbor introduced her to Will McLean. Through their shared love of Florida, Margaret and Will became close friends, and she joined his campaign to teach the whole world about the beauty and fragility of this land of flowers. She immersed herself in the work to preserve it, and to that end, she created the Will McLean Foundation and this festival. This is its 29th year. So given that Margaret was 96 and this festival has been going on 29 years, you do the math. And don't you ever tell yourself you're too old to start something new and something grand and do work that will live on after you. Margaret is survived by her youngest sister, Annalise Nikki Connors, her sister-in-law Jean Longhill, 22 nieces and nephews, and dearest ones John and Dee Dee Sims. These are the facts of Margaret's life. We could never hope to do more than touch a few of them. Truth be told, Margaret didn't much like talking facts about her life. She much preferred to let the music speak of truth and hope and love as she knew it. And so for the remainder of our time together here in this remembering hour, that's exactly what we will do. We could do that for weeks on end. But we have a few artists here, treasured, that will share music with us or Margaret, with the promise that we will carry on for generations to come. Amen. This is, um, this is a song that Margaret uh, uh, often would request uh, of us to, to play for her. We had the honor to play it for her just a, a few weeks before her passing, and we went to her house and spent uh, about uh, an hour and a half or so playing some music for her, and it was just very, very precious time. Um, she always called this music floats along this river, and I never had the heart to, to correct her. <laughs> it's called music drifts along this river. <laughs>
from the principal of Gamble Rogers Middle School who uh, told me, he said, hey Bob, would you help uh, help us put together uh, a folk festival in Gamble's honor? And uh, to be quite honest, I, I'd never done anything like that before, but Margaret had already been doing it for five years. So I, of course, went to Margaret and went to her for more than 20 years. <laughs> and I spent that much time on the phone with her in between the hugs. So that gives you a little context for the song. Sing your songs about rivers, sing about the springs. Sing about the panther and the smallest of living things. Sing about the wise old down the lonesome cowy grip. Just keep singing your songs for Florida. Do it for me and Margaret. You know, me and Margaret have been friends for oh so many years. Oh, we've had our share of laughter, more than our share of tears. We'd always like to ask each other, how oh, much longer can we go on? Providing a place for people to be singing their Florida songs. You know, me and Margaret loved that man known as Will McLean. Oh, we helped him through life's ups and downs as he lived out his master's plan. You know, somehow we got the message. Will made us understand that it was up to us to protect the dignity of our beloved Florida sands. So sing your songs about rivers and sing about the springs Sing about the panther and the smallest of living things Sing about the wise old owl the lonesome cow egret Just keep singing your songs for Florida Do it for me and Margaret Me and Martin love the place known as Rainbow Springs We'd like to look out over the with the coochie watching birds on the wing and we like to bring people together to share their hopes and dreams. You know, but when it comes to Florida, we just want to hear people sing. Oh, me and Margaret love rivers, love to watch them gently flow. You know, we've seen so many people come, so many more go. And we always were so grateful for the treasures they left as they go. If me and Margaret knew someday we'd join that reverse flow. So sing your songs about rivers and sing about the springs. Sing about the panther and the smallest of living things. Sing about the wise old down the lonesome cowy grit. Just keep singing your songs for Florida. Do it for me and Margaret. children. I guess it's the hope in your eyes. We want to see them loved and protected beneath our Florida sky. And sure, we want them to learn the difference between right and wrong. But after that, we want them to be singing our Florida songs. So sing your songs about rivers. Sing about the springs. Sing about the panther and the smallest of living things. Sing about the wise old just keep singing your songs for Florida. Do it for me and Margaret. Oh, sing your songs about rivers and sing about the springs. Sing about the panther and the smallest of living things. Sing about the wise old down the lonesome cow grit. Just keep singing your songs for Florida. Do it for me and Margaret.
going to play a song for you, a waltz that I wrote for Miss Margaret. And the uh, first time I played it, she was waltzing with my friend Dean Dombeck right back here. I think we can probably still see her there. You got me okay? Regardless of the name, 
I was discovering theologians she already knew very well. And I, and, and I was discovering theologians she hadn't heard of yet. So we would exchange information and she would read all of my papers. The beautiful teacher that she was and gently guide me towards some better conclusions. <laughs> but one of the theologians we like to talk about is called Reinhold Niebuhr. And Reinhold Niebuhr said, that we should never undertake anything in our lifetime that can be completed in our lifetime. And to that end, Margaret was always encouraging the young'uns to learn to play. She was encouraging us old'uns to take the time to drag up a tree stump and sit down with young'uns and show them the things that we'd learned along the way. And thus was the Shooting Star and the Youth Music Program established here at the Will McLean festival and our youth have a new song for us and to tell you more about that are the folks that helped them get there. Laura Jo? Good evening everyone. Um, this, this ability to run this program gives me such joy and I know that um, Margaret was it was a pet project for her to support the organizations. And I've been able to do this now uh, for four years. And as I've done this, it's grown. Um, a couple of things I have to do, and I don't want to take up a lot of time, but there are some people I really need to thank. Carolyn Dunn, I could not do this every year without you. Um, I've got Addison Julian, who runs my Battle of the Bands every year and tirelessly runs around helping me throughout the weekend. Uh, Charlie White, thanks for your golf cart this year. Save me. Um, Barry is so patient when we have to do the scheduling and fit my stage in with her adult stages and put it all on the, the um, Friends of Laura Bloat this year sponsored our stage, uh, and we couldn't be more thankful for that. Um, this year we had seven sets of performing musicians. We had, starting at age 10, um, we had about 10 other additional participants who are just coming along learning music and participating in the songwriting collaborative, which you're going to hear now, and the Battle of the Bands. Um, the song that they're doing, well first I need to introduce who, who uh, facilitate the program, which is Cindy and Frank Robert. Um, couldn't have done it without their help. And uh, I'd like to introduce the... Um, I just want to introduce the uh, 2018 Young Music Programs Song Collaboration Group. And I'll have her tell you what the song is called and a little about it. Welcome. I have to, I'm Cindy Bear. This is Frank Robert, Robert and Robert. 
sorry. <laughs> I have to tell you the talent and energy and attitude, can-do attitude in this group has totally blown us away. They are amazing, and they are our future. They actually got the title of the song, the title of the song, the subject, all of that done the first day, and the first verse, and then the second day they finished the song. All we did was just direct them. That's all we did. These kids did everything else, and we're very proud of them. Yes. Give them a hand. These guys are great. So earlier today they had the Battle of the Bands and the name of their band here came from the names of their bands from the Battle of the Bands. Originally they were the bread, there was one group called the Bread Crumbs, another one called the Showerheads, and another one called MJ Anyway, which the original theme of the Battle of the Bands was Michael Jackson, so they stuck with their Michael Jackson song, therefore MJ Anyway. Today's group is called Bread Crumbs in the Shower Anyway. <laughs> And we're very proud of them. So, without further ado, introducing. Yes. The title of their song is called South of the South. And it's a guessing song. We'd like for you to try and guess where they're singing about. At the end of the song, everybody shout out where you think they're singing about. All right? So, in the meantime, South of the South by Breadcrumbs. In the shower, anyway, fasten your seatbelts. Here you go. Ready, guys? Ready. Oh, 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 
Oh, man.